was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross, I like games, and today, we confirmed that that leak was right. You see, last week, earlier in the week, at some point in the fairly recent past, I showed you a leak of the Black Widow Hero Pack of the Marvel Champions Living Guard game. Now, it was a leak and it was unconfirmed, but I also told you that I believed it to be true. Well, now we have the confirmation. We knew there was going to be a Hero Pack revealed today. I assumed it was going to be this one. I said as much, and it is. Black Widow is coming. And once again, we've got a really, really cool new mechanic that is being introduced, which seems to be happening with alarming regularity when we look at these new packs. And I say that with nothing but love and joy and admiration. And it's a Black Widow deck. So let's start off looking at Black Widow. And we've just got 2-2-2 two, two, two across the board. Fort of 2, Attack of 2, Defense of 2. It's... I mean, they're the averages, right? Especially when we just look at the core set. It's, it's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Although, if we then have a look at Natasha Romanoff, we actually see a recover of 3, which is on the low end. Recover of 3 is low, and that's a little bit upsetting. So... Straight off the bat, we're not necessarily loving the stats that we see here. Except, there's more going on than we see. Because if we look at Natasha Romanoff, Mission Prep Response. After you play a Preparation card, draw one card limited to once per phase. It kind of has to be limited to once per phase, otherwise you could potentially play multiple cards and keep drawing and it would be a little bit broken. Limit is, is needed here. And similarly, if we have a look at Black Widow, Widowmaker, response. After you trigger the ability of a preparation card you control, deal one damage to an enemy. Not limited to once per round, okay. So what are we talking about when it comes to preparation cards then? That's kind of important. And preparation cards are upgrades, and they have effects that trigger automatically when something happens, when an event occurs. So we can look at Widow's Bite as an example. A one-cost upgrade with a hero response, attack. After a minion enters play, discard Widow's Bite and deal two damage to that minion and stun it. Which means any minion coming into play to try and take you down is going to have a, a pretty difficult time finding any kind of footing. So that's a little bit mean, shall we say. Now, it's not the only one we were shown. We were shown Grappling Hook, a two-cost upgrade with a hero interrupt. When you reveal a treachery, discard Grappling Hook and cancel the effects of that treachery and discard it. So now, essentially, the first treachery card that comes out after Grappling Hook is in play will do nothing. And this could give you some real protection against them, their nasty villains. So that's quite nice. How about we could take a look at counterintelligence here? Now, it is max one per player, but it's got an interrupt. When any amount of threat would be placed on the main scheme, you discard counterintelligence and prevent free of that threat. Again, too much threat and you lose the game, so preventing some of that threat, that could be kind of important here. And what I like about these upgrades, these preparations, are that you can essentially prepare for the future. You don't have to have this card right now when the threat is being placed. You just have to make sure that you play it down so that it's ready, so that when threat is placed, you can sort it out. And the other one we were shown here is Rapid Response. A two-cost upgrade, max one per player, and it's got a hero response. After an ally you control is defeated, you discard Rapid Response, and then you put an ally into play from your discard pile, and you have to deal one damage to it. Now, dealing one damage to it is upsetting, because it means that they're going to be coming back weak, and you know the... I mean, let's take Agent Coulson as an example, right? Let, let's spoil the surprise. Agent Coulson's coming in as an ally. Two thwart, one attack, but you take a damage when you thwart and you take a damage with every attack, and you've only got three health, so you bring him back with two health, 
knowing that using him twice is essentially going to get him off the board. Doesn't make it a bad thing, incidentally, but it does weaken it somewhat. But then again, it also stops it being proper job over the top busted. So the other thing is you are putting an ally into play from your discard pile. So Agent Coulson is a free cost that so you're basically putting into play as a two cost using rapid response, which probably helps to explain why it's limited to one per player and why you have to take the damage. I'm saying taking the damage makes me a little bit sad. I am not saying that that does not help to balance the card and stop it from being dumb broken. While we're here, we should have a quick chat about Agent Coulson, I suppose. That's only fair. As I've said, three cost, two, four, one attack. Take a damage with each of them. And it's got a response. After Agent Coulson enters play, search your deck and discard pile for a preparation card and add it to your hand. So now you're getting some of these preparation cards back. And this is what I love so much about what we've seen of the Black Widow deck. No Black Widow stats aren't particularly good. They're among the weakest we've seen. But because you've got two really nice skills that interact with preparation cards, some really nice preparation cards, Agent Coulson that helps you get back your preparation card, etc., it all works together quite nicely. Remember, every time you trigger the ability of a preparation card, you're dealing one damage to an enemy using Black Widow. The first time every round, or every phase I should say, when you play a preparation card, you draw a card. And okay, it's only once per phase, but you know what? That's every phase you can potentially draw an extra card. That is unquestionably a good thing. You get a hand advantage. Actually, while we're here, we didn't talk about hand size or hit points, did we? How rude of me, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Black Widow comes in with hit points of 9, as does Natasha Romanoff. Kind of has to be the same. And that's low. That's really low. If we look at the core set, the only one with HP that low is Iron Man. So, okay, it's not unprecedentedly low. We've seen cards as low, but come on. That's, um, that is much lower than we'd like. As for hand size, we've got a hand size of 6 for Natasha Romanoff, and we've got a hand size of 5 for Black Widow, and I mean, yeah, it, it, it's fine. I mean, I will say the hand size is on the higher end in terms of Black Widow, so at least that's like one stat we can look at and go, oh, that's actually quite good. Yay! Now, to be fair, Thwart of 2 is quite high, but it's still pretty much the average. Point is, the stats here are not particularly good, but we've got these interesting play mechanics with the preparation cards that kind of make us forget about it a little bit. Now, we are going to need a Nemesis minion, that's fairly important, and we knew from seeing the back of the box before it's going to be Taskmaster. Now, starting off, 4 health, 0 scheme, 0 attack, that doesn't sound right. Well, Taskmaster gets plus one scheme and plus one attack for each upgrade you control. And I'm sorry, I know I sound like a massive fanboy here, but I love the way they're designing these cards. They're giving us Black Widow, whose entire shtick revolves around these upgrades. But the more upgrades you've got, the better Taskmaster becomes. And remember, your preparation upgrades are sitting there until they are triggered by an event. Which means while they're sitting there, Taskmaster just gets more and more powerful. Yowza. There is also a boost when it comes out of the villain deck. For this activation, the villain gets plus one scheme and plus one attack for each upgrade that you control. So very much the same kind of thing going on there. As well as a Nemesis minion, we are going to need an obligation and we have one. It is Burn Notice. You may flip to Alter Ego form, and then you choose one of the following. You either exhaust Natasha Romanoff and remove this card from the game, all very standard, or you discard the preparation card you control with the highest cost. If you cannot, this card gains Surge, and then you discard the obligation. But you discard it, you don't remove it from the game. Most of these have just uh, exhaust the Alter Ego, remove it from the game, it's fairly standard, but again, it's hurting your preparation card, so thematically, it works really quite nicely here. And there are a couple of events we need to mention quickly finishing off. 
We've got Covert Ops, a free cost event with an action thwart. Remove four threat from a scheme and confuse the villain. That's going to slow him down. And then we've got Dance of Death, a free cost event, which lets you make the following three attacks in order. Deal one damage to an enemy. Deal two damage to an enemy. Deal three damage to an enemy. I like this way more than a card that just let you deal six damage because you get to spread the damage around, taking out some minions, etc. if you so wish. And you get to spread the damage around as you like. Now, you do have to make them in order. So, if you've got a minion that needs two more damage to take it out, you've got to do that with a second attack. But you can't win them all, ladies and gentlemen. It will occasionally make a difference to your sequencing, but most of the time, it's not going to be a huge problem. Once again, I just become excited to get hold of this and start playing some games. Once again, we've got a hero pack, which is bringing in something a little bit new. And it really does look like the designers of this game understand the Marvel characters and are really trying to bring them to life in a way that they can in a card game. You're never going to make it perfect, but we see with things like this, they're really trying to really trying to make it into a hero pack that feels like the Black Widow rather than just the next hero pack that they were planning on making. Oh yeah, and we've whacked Black Widow on the front. But I'd be really interested to know what you think about this. What are your thoughts? How do you think this is going to play? How would you choose to play Black Widow? Go nuts in the comment section, but please remember the rules. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Transformers and Keyforge and any games that take our fancy, to be honest. But by far the most important thing is always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.